David already introduced me and, and uh, we are working together since 10 years, which is also uh, part of my first slide to give you a little background what exactly we are doing uh, since then. So we started 10 years ago, or at least David had his own database he was working on, he had a few thousand coins in there, but he was a single person, he was the one entering all the data, no one else. And it was a closed system, so no linked something. And we worked about 10 years, as David mentioned, and today we have something that is called Antike Fundmünzen Europa, IFA. This system is used by um, different institutions in Poland, in Heidelberg, and also by David. And the nice thing is now we have a system that is uh, web based, so there can be multiple users at the same time entering the coin data and the data is linked to various existing <laughs> sources like numisma.org maybe some of you know who deal with coins which the organization that set up constructs and, and, and the concepts uh, for numismatics we're also linking to uh, Ethan's Ochre uh, and to some uh, systems of the DIE um, we, we serve different ways to access the data, so as the Sparkle endpoint, there is a normal endpoint for, for human reading the elements. Um, what I met, didn't mention so far, it's very easy. Here we have an entry for, for each coin where you say the same coin is also in another database. And there it has this URL, which is a very simple thing, but it's very important, especially for linked open data, if you want to bring the stuff together, you always have the problem to find duplicates. And, and this is a very nice way and a very safe way to identify them. Otherwise, you pull together various coin databases, all having this one single coin at the same time spot, and all of a sudden you have a hoard down there where it was just one coin. And this will, will mess up everything. So there are some very simple, easy tricks, and, and well, not a trick, easy stuff you can do to, to solve certain things. Okay, so that's more or less the context we are, we are working on. But we are still in the process of entering the coins, and we are in the 10,000s there, mainly manually. So there are people sitting there typing in. And uh, so it's not scaling exponentially. But on the other hand, it's. Uh, uh, if you have something like loading the data from the outside, you might have it up with even more errors. If you enter it by hand, you still have errors, because humans do mistakes. And that's natural, and it's something you cannot blame them for, and you shouldn't. So I think one of the idea, and, and one of the message I want to transport in this session also is to deal with errors in a, in a natural way. Because we all do them. I do them, you do them. All of us. Um, okay, so data quality to give you a little frame. Um, there are things like uh, included, also like incompleteness, that's part of it. So you want to know how complete is the data you want to have. There is something about uncertainty, and we have a special uh, presentation on, on that topic later. And of course, there is some wrong data or inconsistent data. and there's always a problem, and that's one of the, the part of the title I have for this first talk, um, how to correct it. So here we see an example that's definitely an error because this cannot be from, from dates when they were born and died. So this simply cannot happen, logically. Um, but at, for me, as a computer scientist, I have no chance to correct this. Because I look at the coin and say, I have no clue. So I need to go to the domain experts, and this is always a long process because it takes time. You need to explain why you think this is incorrect, and then they say, oh, now it's correct because of something different. Um, so correcting afterwards is always a pain and takes much longer. So if you, if you take care in the beginning, it saves a lot of time. Um, I want to dig a little bit in one, one example. What we are doing is to, um, to link our coins or part of the coins that are reflected in the typology of the Roman imperial coinage 
to the Ogre system of Ethan. And Ethan showed in, in his talk on, on the minions, for example, how we use Open Refine to, to figure out how, how the connection should be. Um, but the issue is this, this linkage is, is in fact quite complicated. So when first David told me you need to link to there, it's very simple. You need the authority, you need to know which RIC volume it is, because there are different volumes. And, and then you basically need the number and then you can link it. Unfortunately, these, these typologies are made by humans nowadays. And that's a problem because they tend to do things very differently in different situations, which is okay because there are reasons behind that. And you need to differentiate between those reasons. But it's at the end quite complicated. So this is the example, uh, the easy way. So you have the authority, you get the, the number, and then you can point directly to the typology as defined in this RIC volumes and to the Ogre system. But then all of a sudden in a certain volume they, they switch and they don't use any more the the authority, and all, all of a sudden they use the place where the coin was minted. Okay, fine, still something you can do, you can write your rules accordingly, but then all of a sudden you find out the next obstacle because uh, some are not uh, defined by the authority that is behind, some are defined by the, by the wife of the emperor, by this uh, shown on the upper side, which is very nice, but the more of those exceptions you include, the more complex gets mapping and the more likely it is that you have errors in it. And if you make it an automatic script, what we did first, you end up with a lot of errors, which all of a sudden you think, hmm, why is there an error? Which is, by the way, a very interesting, interesting tour to, to dig down why is this error there? And then to understand why does it happen, where does it come from. So then also provenance information, like David mentioned, uh, come from 19th century something, is, is very helpful, very useful. So nowadays we, we use, of course, systems to, to figure out, like, like Ethan's uh, open refine way to figure out this coin should be mapped properly to this type. But at the end, it's still nowadays, at the moment, a human who says this is a URL and not automatic anymore. Because I think it's a little bit too dangerous. <coughs> so this is just an example to show you um, how complicated things might, might be. And when I, when I search for, for inconsistencies, I, I basically need something we at computer scientists normally try to avoid, which is redundant data. Because I need redundant data in order to compare them and say, oh, they're equal? Okay, fine. Nothing to complain. But if the redundant data is not the same, if they're different for some reason, then I need to figure out why. And then I have something, something to tackle. So, so one point is, where do I get a redundant data? Where get a can I get additional data I usually didn't encounter? So there are two, two fields we are tackling at the moment. One is uh, the image. We try to analyze and figure out what is, what is really on the image with different uh, approaches. And the other one is the normal text written by humans. So on the images we, we have implemented and tested already one tool on, on the ochre images that are given by the different institutes to um, link their data to ochre or to, to Numisma and via Numisma <coughs> uh, included into ochre. And there are different algorithms in open libraries like open um, CV uh, that allow you to figure out which Coins are more or less similar, and then you could can rank them and say, okay, this coin is probably very likely to be this type, or at least in a set of certain types. 
We are currently also working uh, in a, with a different approach. It's uh, more the deep learning. So the difference is you're not having an algorithm that gets the most exciting point of an Im image. It's more a network of, of neurons that is kind of pre-trained and then it's trained by a, a, a given uh, corpus of, uh, of point images. And, and this is uh, currently working on a progress, um, figuring out what is, for example, which person is on this coin. The, the one difficulty on, on uh, deep learning is that you sometimes don't see what is happening in there. So you have the question, why is this network deciding this is Marcus Aurelius or this is Neo or this is something. And um, the, luckily nowadays you also have possibilities to, to ask the network and to visualize what was the main reason for choosing uh, a certain thing. I'm not sure if you can see that. But in this case the nose was definitely a very important point for the network. And which is, which is good because it's part of the, of the face. Yeah. If it would be uh, the legend, then definitely something would be wrong if you want to identify the person. Right. And it's also maybe quite an interesting question and, and, and thing for numismatists to, to see the coins from that point of view of how computers look at it. Um, one thing we are kind of currently missing in this, in this area is that we need images that are in the best case are labeled like saying here's a, it's a legend, here's a mint bar, here's a face and so on. That's kind of missing and uh, the problem is it's uh, currently there's no tool that does this automatically so you need human work to generate those stuff. Then on uh, the natural language we use some natural language processing so we generate lists to search for, we have system to be trained and then this system tries to identify which persons are in the text, which animals, uh, plants and so on. I mean most of you know that if you go on a new site you find the name of Angela Merkel or somewhere else, maybe there is a hyperlink and then you can click on it. That's the same story. So it's nothing, nothing brand new but uh, it's not very often implemented. I think the, the person of Cyprus mentioned that he's using NLP also to compare the measurements of his 3D models with the written text. So it's, it's, it's used. Um, what we are aiming at to, to combine all those different issues is basically here in my, my last slide of this beginning talk. So what we, what we have here What I just talked about, we have the image and we can try to get information out of the, the image. We can try to figure out which possible coin type it could be and we can <coughs> potentially figure out which person is on it. So this is work in progress, uh, so I cannot give you results on that, but that's what we are working on. Then we have the coin in the database itself and we have the data that is in the database itself. So uh, what David entered, oh no, yeah. what David entered, who, who's the person on the obverse side um, and maybe a description which is natural text where we can say there's Vespasian included. And then we can compare this information in the own database since we linked it to link open data. In this case it's ochre. We know there is also the description of the type information as well. So we know there from this type information Vespasian should be on the upper side. And at the end we basically need to do is to check, okay, are all those persons here around, is it equal or is it different? If it's equal we are all happy because it still might be wrong, but at least it's consistent. <laughs> um, but if it would be different, then we have something where we say, okay, there should be something changed. Yeah. I even had one case where, where I used uh, in, in my database um, 
an old URI of a person that was in, in Numisma was linked to a, to a different oh, I have five minutes to a different URI. So there was a, a change in the name, but this, the old one was still valid, so it was kind of forwarded. But if I compare it here, it would pop up that there is something wrong. If you put it in a, in a real um, graph database, RDF database, they would know then at the end that Vespasian maybe was misspelled in, in one point of time before and it was kind of, there is the same S uh, relation to it, it would just, wouldn't claim to be any problem. Well, that's the last slide, but I have the second round at the end, so uh, I think that gives me...